My mother, she was raised in Marvel, Arkansas, and my father was raised here in Tawnytown. Um, he is the son of Willard and Catherine Moon, and Catherine was Catherine Granada Moon. My, which I call Nono and Nona Moon, they were, uh, my grandmother was pretty much a stay-at-home mom from anything that I remember um, being the baby of the family. She was always a homemaker. My Nono Willard, he worked at Jones Truck Line, JTL, and um, from, I don't, again, I was young when he worked there, but my grandmother being the homemaker, and she did work at her family's winery and worked for her parents, um, was in time when I was not born, <laughs> but I know that that's where she did work. My mom's parents are from Marvel, Arkansas. They moved up here. Um, my mom's brother found this area, this beautiful area called Northwest Arkansas. He was a musician and had a musical career and kind of moved his whole family up this area when he came upon it. And they moved up here and they had worked in Marvel in cotton fields and grew up very poor and found this beautiful area, like I said, and her brother was Levon, he moved them up here and that is where my mom ended up meeting my dad at the Catholic Church here in Tawnytown. Levon Helm, he played, um, oh, he has such a background, let's see. He, initially, he, him and my mom played growing up in 4-H events and did um, contests. They would travel around towns and their small towns locally or around Marvel, let me put it that way, and they would do singing competitions for for money. And um, then he was founded by Ronnie Hawkins, and Ronnie Hawkins then, um, I believe he played with him for a while, but ended up becoming in with Bob Dylan in the band. And Bob Dylan in the band, then the band broke apart and they just stayed as the band. And he was one of the lead vocalists and the drummer for the band and he traveled all around the world and played with tons of stars and recorded with tons of stars, played at Woodstock. And, but my mother was not able to go when they were about 12 because she was a girl and she had to stay home. But my, parent, my grandparents supported him and his music career. But at that time, it wasn't proper for girls to go and do those types of things as much. So Some of the songs that he is famous for is Up on Cripple Creek, um, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, and um, Rag Mama Rag, um, and there's more, but those are some that he's probably the most popular for. I have one sibling, his name is Mark Moon, and he um, was, uh, we were both raised here on our family farm, which is where my grandmother lived, right, my grandmother and grandfather lived right next door to us, and my parents built a home right next to them, and we were both raised here. He actually, was born and it was a baby in the cabins behind the Venetian Inn. That's where he was raised for a few years and then they built this home, which is also the farm where my dad was raised. My dad worked at UPS for a long time and drove a truck for UPS. And my mom worked at Tyson Foods in Springdale and that is what they did primarily um, as long as I can remember until about seven or eight years old. And then my dad got hurt and hurt his back and so had to give that up and then started helping my great aunt Alice up at the Venetian Inn and we also had a cattle farm. And he worked around the farm and worked up there for her. And then when my aunt Alice um, reached a point where she got ill, um, she asked my mom and my dad to help run the, and take over the Venetian Inn in Tawnytown. And they did that and my mom would work at Tyson during the day and work at the Venetian Inn at night with my dad because we were only open for dinner on Tuesday through Saturday. And they ran that and my mom still runs it today. When it started, it was started by the Gasparados and my great grandparents bought it from them early in the 40s. It opened in 47. Um, I'm unsure of when uh, my great grandparents bought it from them, but uh, they bought it and my great aunt Alice ran it. And everyone I think in Tawnytown has that grew up here that's probably over the age of 45 has worked at the Venetian Inn at some point in their life um, doing some job, whether it be waitressing, swamping, or making tea and coffee, because that was one of the main businesses locally where you could work growing up. And um, they, my great aunt Alice and Uncle Paul, they ran it 
forever. People love them. My great aunt Alice was a huge jokester. Uh, my great uncle Paul, he passed away before I was born, so I only know stories about him, but they ran it together until then, and my um, great aunt Alice took over, and I hear tons of stories on her, and you probably have heard tons of stories about her. <laughs> so um, she is just, like I said, she was a jokester, and then when she got ill, she passed on to my parents, and they tried to continue the same tradition, and the quality of the food, the, you know, we homemade all of our foods, our sauces, our pastas, and people, the Venetian's been known for the huge steaks, for when you know people would go to the U of A and come out here and eat because it was one of the few places that was open, um, few restaurants to go and eat at, and it would people would come out here and tell us about the huge steaks that they used to serve as the biggest steaks they had ever seen and how wonderful the pastas and the sauces were and they were homemade and they felt like family when they showed up and um, that when they came back again they were known you know oh I remember you from last time or. Um, really felt like part of the family and that's what kept them coming back and then when they would go off from college and then come back um, that was that's always still some of the greatest stories we hear up the Venetian Inn is how people you know my great-grandparents got engaged here or my grandparents had their wedding anniversary here or I heard about this growing up from my mom and dad when they were in college they courted here and so you get lots of generations telling you about multiple stories of how the Venetian Inn was in their life, whether it be in college or it be, um, you know, their great grandparents, their grandparents, or even themselves. Um, I think one of the neatest stories is Elsie Mae Pinalto. Elsie Mae Pinalto, she started there when she was 16 years old and she retired there. Um, I believe she retired in 06, 07, somewhere right around that time frame. She finally came to me and was like, you know, she was just, I think, she, that, that was her only job she ever worked at. And um, we unfortunately lost Elsie Mae this year. She was a wonderful lady and probably one of the sweetest people you would ever meet. I don't think anyone would ever have a bad thing to say about her and so sweet and friendly. And customers had always seen a lot of our waitresses that, um, because that is the face up front that they talk to and um, interact with more than anyone. And, um, Elsie Mae was is probably she's just that classic story. She's a great lady and um, grew up just down the road. Another one is Holly White, um, Jean Ferguson. Those are two waitresses that um, have worked there forever. That were raised, they were not raised in Tawny Town, but they live around the area. Um, I can remember older waitresses again from when I was younger, and. Um, I know Lorraine Taldo or Lorraine Taldo, she worked there and as a waitress and some of the people in the back that worked there is Barbara Greenlee, her daughter actually still works for us and um, well when I was growing up, um, like I said, there weren't as many restaurants around here as there are today but we used to have lines that would wrap all the way around the building and um, we would, one of my jobs as a younger child, I would go out there with just dozens of rolls and offer them to the people as they were standing in line to kind of satisfy them for their weight and encourage them, um, you know, to stay. And uh, that was something that is, it, it's a fun memory because people would wait for hours and they would stand there and they would kind of, um, if you will, tailgate outside while they were waiting in line you know after a Razorback game they would um, have a styrofoam cup or just be hanging out in line while when you could do stuff of that nature and um, wait for hours and the tables would turn you know that's always been one of our one of the jokes people would say that have told me is people would stand and be like you know your Aunt Alice would stand over and go yes they're almost done you know it's probably five or ten minutes when the people are like we're not even through eating but she would be trying to rush them out you know to get other people seated or um, other people have stories of her just going come on I'll sneak you up front and seat certain people down that she knew and um, it's fun to hear those stories of what people what impacted people and when they come back out they feel entitled to tell us that and those are fun stories to hear I've worked there, I feel like, my entire life. Um, when I was little, I wanted to work, you know, I wanted to help when I would be up there because my entire family worked up there, my cousins, my um, older cousins especially, and I feel like I was raised there. Um, one of the things that I would do is I can remember early, I don't, probably six, seven years old, would be helping 
carry drinks to the tables or making drinks for the waitresses and they would tip me at the end of the night for helping them. I'd carry bread baskets and help the swampers. Um, and then as I got a little older, probably around eight or nine, I would, my Aunt Alice would let me run the cash register. And people would always kind of look at me like, cause at that time it was, you would pay cash most of the time. Um, there weren't credit cards and you would sometimes get a check, but I know people would stare at me like, are you going to be able to count this change? And um, that's where I learned how to count money, was just working up there and I was good at it and I would count it back to them and I did the cash register and one of the fun things for me is at the end of the night she would let me pull out the drawer and if there were a few dollars back there that was my pay for the day. Um, and so I did that growing up with her and then of course when my parents took over then I was required to work for um, you know at least two nights a week I usually worked every Friday and Saturday night and I would run the cash register seat the people and I would also you know help make pastas and um, whatever mom needed and then there's times I've helped make bread and uh, my dad passed away in 05 and then at the same year my mom had a massive stroke and so at that time I kind of took over um, for it, what it was actually a real short period of time, but it seemed like eternity I, because my mom was ill and I was running mad and so I was having to help out more and learn some things that I had always I had not learned or about the actual business side of it, not just how to cut spaghetti or how to hang it and how to cut out the rolls, but now recipes and actually making some things and then um, I ran that all through um, 2006 and then my mom had gotten a lot better by God's grace and she took back over at that time after about a year. Some of my earliest memories that I can think of is, you know, when from the time obviously that I can remember is we, is Sundays. Sundays was family day. At that time, every Sunday we went to church as a family and then we went out to eat usually with my Aunt Alice and my Nona, um, Catherine, and or a lot of people called her Dolly. And we would go out and eat with them and every Sunday that was just the routine. And you would go out and eat and then you would usually go up to Alice's house and a lot of times we'd do dinner up there and that's where your cousins and extended family, they would all meet and we would have I mean, it seemed like every Sunday, I'm sure that it wasn't, but we would go to either some cousin's house or play with our cousins or go see family on Sunday if they didn't all come to Al's house. But a lot of times we all went to Al's house on Sunday and that would bring in all the cousins and all the you know, brothers and sisters of hers and all of their children and siblings and then people, uh, my cousins that were more my age. So that is what, that's some of the earliest memories I have. And then some of the others is um, going to Tawny Town School. Um, Tawny Town School closed when I was in second grade. I only went there through the second grade, but what was neat about the kids you went to school with Monday through Friday is you also, most of them went to church with. <laughs> so it was a very, it's a very tight, community and a lot of them were related um, some way or shape or form or connected you know your parents either worked together or they were were related or in some way shape or form and but we went to school with the, the same kids we went to church with that was my that was the last year it was open when I was in second grade and then they opened this new elementary school named Walker Elementary and all of the Tawny Town kids went to Walker and it was a new elementary school that seemed like forever in town, just in Springdale <laughs> on 40th Street, but it was just so much further away than what we were used to going to school. Um, and I think the friendships were still the same. Again, a lot of these kids, we all went to church together and um, we, we made new friends. We got exposed to kind of new things. I can remember you know, seeing kids that actually, at that time, none of us walked to school. Not, not any that I knew of, I'm sure there maybe were, but you know, around that area they walked to school and they rode their bikes to school and lived in more subdivisions. And you know, we all lived out here, everybody lived in a small town, but we all lived on farms and it wasn't just a bike ride away necessarily. So um, that was a different experience, but I think a lot of, you know, a lot of the kids we still went to church with, so I still was friends with a lot of the Tawny Town kids. And of course, we always look forward to the Great Festival every year, and that was always some of our big things. I know that one of the places that we used to go to and eat that I don't 
I don't personally remember the name, but it was like a little Dairy Queen. It's where Mama Z's is located now. It was a restaurant there that we used to go to and we would eat at. Um, I know that too, we would take our cars to get fixed as much locally and people around town as possible. Um, as I can remember, you know, the town has grown so much and so much grew into Springdale that um, it was it it was just a different time for for my generation. Most of anything you went and did, you did go to what we call town. <laughs> you went to Springdale or Fayetteville to buy or purchase. Some of our favorite places that I can remember going eating when I was younger were, um, we ate a lot at Lake Atlanta and Rogers. They had had a restaurant up there. We also ate at Neil's Cafe in Springdale um, that's still there. Um, AQ, which is also still there in Springdale. Um, there was a cafeteria in Fayetteville called White's Cafeteria that we ate at, and um, the Clarion Inn had a buffet in Fayetteville that we often ate at. And those are probably some of the top places being younger that I can remember eating at more often, and sometimes Heinie's in Springdale. Well, you know, as a young kid running around, we didn't um, I didn't have neighbors, so to say. My, my neighbor was my grandmother on one side and another, you know, grandmother on the other side, a Tesaro grandmother on the other side. So I didn't just have friends that would come over and play. There was not a lot of people that lived nearby that could come play with me um, without being driven. Um, you know, as opposed to the way it is now with my children, the way the area has grown, they have neighbors within walking distance. And that wasn't the way it was when I was younger. We either met at church or we you know would go and meet at a park and play at the tiny town park or again i played so much with my cousins we drove to their home and we play in the hay barn or we would just play outside for hours or we'd go to another family member's home and and play with box i mean just play with whatever they had available <laughs> at the time <laughs> my brother as i said i have a sibling he's 10 years older than me and when i was growing up um we went to a lot of football basketball and baseball games that is what i feel like we did and that's what my parents did for fun we if we traveled it was usually to some sporting event um so and with a lot of their friends and i know you know that was it's a small town and so that was what you did friday nights you know you went to springdale football games that's um where everybody you know, that was the big thing to do on a Friday night in a small town, and that is what we did. It felt like my entire childhood. Of course, he played sports till I was 10, because again, our 10 year difference, till I was at least eight years old. That's all I did was live at some ballpark or gym. And um, right at that time when my brother went to college is when my parents took over the Venetian Inn. So their fun life at night had kind of, <laughs> it had taken a different turn. But I know my parents always told me, you know, they would go out dancing in Fayetteville or, Go to, um, they love to go dancing is what I always heard. And that was one of the big things they love to do or meet with friends and play cards. I just don't know exactly where. <laughs> Some of the greatest memories I have as a child is the Tawny Town Grape Festival. You know, we talked about and looked forward to it from the day it was over one year to the beginning of the day it started the next year. It was like, as my brother and I have talked, it was almost like our vacation week. Um, because then we didn't go on vacations for weeks at a time like a lot of kids do now and that was our week where there was something to do every night and those were the days my parents would just drop me off at the Great Festival um, and I would have tickets and ride rides and of course I felt like I knew everyone up there and everyone knew me and even being little you weren't you weren't scared because you knew you knew so many people up there and they would drop me off and we would ride all those rides and just think it was Disneyland or what I would say is Disneyland to my children, you know, and it was just the greatest thing ever. And we would ride for hours and then we would play bingo and we'd play the wheel and, you know, your grandparents would be up there and buy you hamburgers. And, um, I can remember the wonderful hamburgers that the fire department would cook. That was a, a big deal. And then we'd also have the spaghetti dinners. And um, you had to work on this. You had one night with the church that you were obligated to work at. So um, the different things that people do, I can remember is obviously I can remember when I was younger working in the kitchen and I um, did refills of drinks. You know, I'd walk down up and down those tables and ask every person there, would you like more tea or coffee or water? More tea or coffee or water. Um, but we also had to prep for it, too. So we were 
you know, my mom would make me go up there and help make spaghetti and help cut and hang spaghetti. And But the festival itself was just such a celebration and such a exciting time as a child. I mean, it, I, it still brings a smile on my face and I want my kids to feel that way. And so when they, we drive by it every day, they just, it's here, it's here. And it just makes me smile because that's the excitement I used to feel and they get just as excited. So it's just different now because I can't drop them off and just say, have fun. I'll pick you up at 10, meet me here at the wheel at 10 o'clock, you know, and that's just different time and different age. <laughs> at some point you knew as a girl, you were probably going to get asked to run for Queen Concordia. Um, so the year I ran, um, I was the 97th annual Queen Concordia. I won that year, but when you're asked, um, it was me and Summer Rinaldi and um, Stephanie, um, let's see, it was me, Summer Rinaldi, and Stephanie Wilburn. That's who it was. We ran together and against each other, I guess, but you're doing it for a great cause. You're doing it for the church. So it's not as, it's a competition, but it is for the cause, not for the true competition. But you go out and sell tickets. And my, you have a few weeks that you have to sell in a territory uh, during the time I ran, you sell in a certain territory and then after those few weeks you're allowed to sell anywhere. So we, we sold in our territory and every day my mom would go to work early, take off and we would drive around town and just hit business and business and friends. You'd ask friends to try to sell tickets for you and you know at their places of business that you couldn't maybe solicit. And, you know, I can remember going into like Lindsay and asking Jim Lindsay to buy tickets. I can remember, um, JB Hunt buying tickets from me, you know, and it was very, it was, it was a neat thing because it was probably the first time as a being 16 years old, I had to actually approach someone as an adult and ask them to buy something. And you're kind of learning how to be a salesman, um, and telling them, you know, giving a present, giving kind of your speech. This is what I'm doing, even though these people knew what you were doing because people had been doing it for years. But you're trying to sell this car and, you know, you get, if you buy $5 worth, you get a, six chances. So you get a free one, encouraging them to, you know, buy that way. And um, anyways, you, you worked your, you worked your rear off, you know, every day for the, for the good of the church. And, you know, you turned in your tickets. And at that time when I won, you know, I, I sold, um, 12,800 tickets of something of that nature, a, thir a little over 13. And that was the most that was ever sold. And now they sell like, you know, 47, 48,000 cause times are just so much different. There's so many more people in our area. And I think it, it's a blessing to our church, but at that time it was, it's, it, it's fun. It, it, and it's something that you can say, yes, this is what I did. And we have so many Queens and that's part of the tradition that's, that we carry on. My family and my, more my extended family do, does a lot. A lot of my cousins work up there. Um, but of course my mom runs the restaurant and then I, my husband and I will run the wheel one night on a Friday night. And that's what we do. My, my children are five and seven, so they're not participating yet. Right now, all they're doing is asking for armbands and tickets and wanting to ride rides. But, um, before too long, that's what they'll be doing and they'll have their spot and have to go make spaghetti and do the um, same traditions that we've all done as we've been raised here in our church. You know, one thing that I think is great about the great festival, you had mentioned change earlier, and you know the bands have changed everything has changed but what has not changed is how our community works together to make it our fundraising event for our church and um, generation after generation after generation even though things have slightly changed as times have changed the still the main thing is just a group and a community coming together even though people may not live in Tawny Town anymore they still go to our church or they still participate or even people that don't go to our church that were raised in Tawny Town we've had some of those members that will help during the great festival because they grew up and it means so much to them too you know when I was younger it was a two-lane highway to get home and it seemed like it took forever to get from Springdale to Tawny Town even though now it's just right there but at that time it just we would come home during the great festival and it would just take an hour or longer to get from Springdale to our house because of a two lane traffic. And that was all there was. Um, but some of the things now when that, when that road expanded into becoming five lane, that was a huge, just like, wow. And that caused the, 
you know, kind of chain reaction of now more businesses coming this way, much more traffic this way, easier to get from Siloam to Springdale or Fayetteville. But then when I can also remember when the bypass went in and also being able to see the McDonald's sign from our backyard. And I never believed that we would ever have a McDonald's to where I could see the sign in our backyard. And I'm talking about the one that's by the bypass. It was just, it was this huge sign. And I can remember telling my dad, wow, you know, we can see a McDonald's sign from our yard. And, um, but those, but just the amount of businesses um, that have just come our way. And then in turn is rooftops and, um, instead of just oh there's that family's farm or that family's farm now it's like there's a subdivision that was you know the Pinalto farm or whatever so and then also when um, the Joneses sold their land in in their created harbor meadows that really pushed a lot of people more our way so that's some of the big changes that I remember going up and down so if you ask me like I can like what Tawny Town kind of means to me. Um, my great grandparents came here um, with the idea of probably opportunity. I never got to meet my great grandparents, but just the stories I hear and what, you know, family means to, meant to them. And, you know, they were given an opportunity and capitalized on that and gave what I think is interesting, gave each one of their four children a good foundation to where, and in that, in that turn, gave them opportunity. And all four of their children, um, they gave a home place for them to live and some of them even a business to run. And that has, um, you know, they, they had to instill great values in their children and then in, in turn the generation of, and their children's children to still keep so many, and it's not just our family, but so many people, my generation, still love it here, still live here. And I'm a fourth generation. So, you know, for my great grandparents to be just up the road, my grandmother raising my dad on our farm and then them living here, my parents building on our farm and now I'm raising my children on our farm and it, it and this is where I want to be, you know. So just those family opportunities and some great foundation and you know, God's first and family second. And that is one of the values that I think is is really instilled in a lot of families in Tawny Town and keeps keeps people here and keeps people connected. And um, like I said, we were just lucky enough that we had some opportunities that they gave us and we still are able, just like the Venetian Inn, capitalizing off of those opportunities today. Well, we were always told that they, um, the gentleman, Mr. Gasparato, named it because of all the Venetian blinds he installed over his lifetime is what we were always told. Um, as I was growing up, um, some of his family members have suggested that not be true, but that's what we were always told. Um, you know, it was an inn. We used to get phone calls all the time asking for a room. Um, and we would say, no, we, it's, it's just called the Venetian Inn. It's not a true inn. Um, but they did used to have cabins in the back and those cabins were, um, were rented out. And there was also a liquor store by the Venetian Inn. And that was all right there. And the liquor store was torn down. We used to play in it as a kid. It wasn't any longer in business, but we would play in it, me and my cousins, thinking that it was, you know, all these doors and we would spray paint. My and Alice let us spray paint and just play in there for hours. But um, they ended up tearing that down, but the cabins end up got, they ended up getting torn down also. But my parents actually lived there when they first got married, like I'd said, and um, raised my brother there for a few years before they built their home. It was an Italian settlement. It's a tight-knit little Italian community that has um, such special and unique characteristics about it. You know, there are um, there are fam there's a local church that so many people attend, and they continue generations and generations. Like you go to church and you say, "There's so and so's grandparents, and there's the parents, and there's the children and the grandchildren," and everyone kind of stays together. They go to CCD together. They um, and the Great Festival really does bring everybody together. That's the time that, you know, we have this huge fundraiser that's state known and um, for our church. And that's the time people come back for the Great Festival. If they live in California or if they live in Oklahoma, whatever the case may be, they will come home for the Great Festival because that's when you see so many people at one time. 
and see people you hadn't seen in years or you'd go to church. I can remember my cousins coming home or flying in just at the great festival time to see family members and it's just a time to come together to celebrate tradition. My favorite thing about Tiny Town is the wonderful food at the Venetian Inn. <laughs> <laughs>